Right, this is a lecture on cryptography and it's on the number theory course. So you'll be using Euclid's algorithm at some point. So, so with that, right. Uh, first off, with uh, cryptography, there are some simpler methods, which you might have seen before. You can get these with spinning wheels, which is the Caesar cipher. Now, C uh, this is Julius Caesar. He did this. He put the alphabet in a line and then he shifted them all by three. So instead of using an A, he'd use a D, a B, he'd use an E, and what we start with, the A to Z, is the plain text, and then what we've changed it to, this is called the cipher text, and, well, this is the Caesar cipher, so you just move them about, and you, there's 26 different ways you can do this, I think that's pretty easy to work out, because there's 26 letters. Right, uh, one thing we can do with cryptography is we can always work, them, uh, it's always mathematical modulo 26 because there are 26 letters and the letters are always going to be changed into a digital alphabet of the values 0, 1 for A, 2 for B and so on and we use the 0 in front and if we're going to use a space in our message then we use two zeros and I imagine if you wanted to put a number in there then you would just write the number in letters Right, so if we were going to describe this Caesar cipher above in terms of modulo 26, then if we had C as our ciphertext and P as our plain text, then the ciphertext is the plain text plus 3 modulo 26. So here at the Z, we're adding 3, which is 29, modulo 26, which is 3, which is C, so we've got the C here. Uh, and more complex ones, they use the values, they use a multiplication as well. So we have C equals A times P plus B modulo 26, where the highest common factor of A and 26 is 1. So it's usually a prime number. Right. Uh, more definition stuff. Oh, I've forgotten what this third symbol is called. I think it's Psi. I'll call it Psi, but it might not be called Psi. So we have psi of m, uh, this is going to be the number of integers that are co-prime, which are less than m. So, and, so if you had psi of 4, then you've got 3 and 1, so that would be 2. Yeah, right. Uh, here, phi of m, now if it's m, it's m minus 1 if m is prime, because every number will be co-prime, really. Uh, and if you multiply them, so we have 5 m times n, this is 5 m times 5 n, if and only if m and m are prime. Right, I think, right, this is the RSA method. I hope there's enough time in this video. Right, now to do this, this is the one that they're using all the war and everything, I think. So you choose two primes, p and q, and you multiply, multiply them together to get, to get an n. And this is called the encoding modulus. Then you calculate your psi of n and find a k. I've got an example if this makes no sense. Uh, it's called the encoding exponent. So the highest, com fa highest common factor of k and our psi of n is 1. Now what you do, you, you use this k and this n and you can send that to someone as the public key and it doesn't matter who gets it because they, they can't uh, decode it without knowing psi of n and the idea is you might think oh but n will be easy to calculate uh, psi of n will be easy to calculate because you know n but they use an n say we use primes of 100 digits uh, then two of them we've got 200 digit number and finding psi of n for that is very difficult that's why there's prizes out for like a million digit number, uh, prime numbers. Right, then you want to, then, well, the, when they've got the public key, they get their message and turn it into a digital alphabet, and this is donated as M, denoted as M. So they line up all the digits, and this is their value M. Then when they've got this, they must split it up so that they're in chunks, which are always less than your value n and you try and make the chunks the same size so you'll have like a if 
end was a thousand, then you usually have chunks of three to make sure they no, never go over a thousand. Um, and now, now what they do is they change each of those chunks, so they get their values, those m parts, do them to the power k because you gave them k, and that gives you them a value r mod n, and this this r is what they send you. So when you get all those r's, you need to find a recovery exponent which is called j, so that you can have k times j equals one mod psi of m, and this j for if you got smaller numbers, then you can calculate it with k to the psi of psi of n minus 1, modulo psi of n, it's calculated j, otherwise you just use, you can use a Euler's method, that's what it's called, sorry. Then once you've found your j, you can turn all the r's back into the normal message by doing them to the power j mod n and they piece them together. Right, we've got an example. So that probably made little sense. So we've picked two primes, 13 and 17. We multiply them to get n, which is 2, 2, 1. Uh, this is our n. Now we want to find our psi of n. Now, like we said before, we, uh, we can multiply two primes. If they're inside here, then we do the primes minus each other. So we get 1, 9, 2. That's why it's easy for us to calculate it and not for the other person. They'd have to go through every number and check if it's co-prime. Uh, now we want to find a k, which is the highest common factor of uh, k, and 192 is going to be 1. So you usually pick another prime number, I've picked 7. So we can send out our public key, which is the n, and the k, which is 7221. Now if you're at the other end, say you want to encode the message YouTube, which we've done in the digital alphabet as 25, 15, 21, 20, 21, 2, 5. You put them together, and this gives you your value m, this is our value m. But this m is much greater than our n, which is 2, 2, 1. So because that's three digits, we'll split them up into two digits. So we'll do 25, 15, 21, I think I've some blocks actually. We'll split that up in, into two digit parts. And sometimes if you've got a four, they just split up to three digits. Right, now what we have to do is we have to raise them to the power k. So 25 to the power k modulo 221, this gives us the value 168, uh, 15 to the 7 is 76, and so on. I've only done 21 once because we've used it twice, so you don't need to. And then we put that together, these are our, our new values, we send each of those to the person that you want to decode the message. So we send them 168, then we send them 076, then we send them 200, then 045, 200 again, 128, 112. Now we've received their numbers, so what we want to do is we want to find the J so we can turn them back. So we need a J uh, such that 7 times J is going to go into 1 mod 192. So to do that, we want to solve, the, you do the Euler method, uh, 7x minus 192y minus 1. So if you know the Euler method, then we're doing, we see how many 7s go into 192, which is 27, with remainder 3. Then how many 3s go into the 7 is 2, with remainder 1. And how many 1s go into the 3? Well, it's 3, there's no remainder. So now we work backwards with what we've got here. So 1 is... Well, it's a 7 minus a 6, and a 6 is equal to, if we go up here, it's 2 times this lot, really. So that's what I've done here, 2 times 192, and we've moved this over here, so minus 2 times 7 times 27. Let this out, we get 1 equals 55 times 7 minus 2 times 192. We don't really need to look at this stuff, but we've got our j as our 55 times 7, so j is 55. Right, now we've got this, we can just work out what all the values are. So we, we raise up the values they've sent us to the power 55, and then do the modulo 2 to 1. Now this can be quite difficult, so you'll have to do a longer method, which involves doing uh, 168 modulo 2 to 1, then you do 168 squared modulo 2 to 1, and then this will give you a value, then if you multiply these two values together, 
then do that modulo 221. This will give you 168 to the 4. Multiply the 4s together. This will give you uh, to the power 8. And you don't have to actually work out such high powers, but you have to do it in a long method just by multiplying the powers. I hope that made sense. Um, so with the 55 you'd work out 1 then you'd, uh, it's, it's all to do with really binary so you'd have 32 plus an 8 you could probably, and then plus another 8 shall we and then another 8 so you'd have 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 1 I think that's right or something like that right and th then we've got this message here so we've compiled them 168 is 25 mod 221 25, 15, 21, 45, 21, 12805. We put this together, and this is what spell it spells out YouTube, which is what we sent out in the first place. Now I've got an example here, which I want you to post in the comments if you can do it. So we've got the public key NK, which is a 1073 and 17. And well, I'll give you the sigh of N because you're the person that sent it. So this is what the me this is the message we're sending you back. So I want you to decode it if you can, and tell me what it says. So we've got two seven four. I've sent you, and I've sent you eight four seven, and I've sent you zero nine six. So just post in the comments.